Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berto Worry here. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you are doing well. Happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. It looks like my lighting is a little bit off. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so my sister, my brother, did you take time out to read the word? Did you take time out? Remember, we must study, we must study, and we know it is late on planet Earth. It is late. Earth is becoming an old garment, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, scripture reading is coming from 1 John, 1 John 2, verses 17. 1 John 2, verses 17. 1 John 2, verses 17. And it reads, And the word passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's get into our topic today. None enter as commandment breakers. None who has who have had the light of truth will enter the city of God as commandment breakers. His law lies at the foundation of his government in earth and in heaven. If they have knowingly trampled upon and despised his law on the earth, they will not be taken to heaven to do the same work there. There is no change of character when Christ comes. Listen, there is no change of character when Christ comes. The character builds building is to go on during the hour of probation and now when when is probation we are in probation hours right now my sister my brother let me repeat that the character building is to go on during the hours of probation day by day their actions are registered in the books of heaven and they will in the great day of god be rewarded as their works have been it will then be seen who received the blessings. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. This is coming from Revelations chapter 22, verses 14. Those who make a raid against God's law and warring against God himself and many who are filled with the greatest bitterness against the commandment-keeping people of God make the loudest boast of living holy, sinless lives. This can be ex explained only in one way. They have no mirror, meaning, you know, the mirror that you look on, look at yourself in the morning. So this can be explained only in one way. They have no mirror in which to look to discover to themselves the deformity of their characters. Neither Joseph, Daniel, nor any of the apostles claim to be without sin. Let me repeat that. Neither Joseph, Daniel, nor any of the apostles claim to be without sin. Men who have lived nearest to God, men who would sacrifice life itself rather than to knowingly sin against him men whom god has honored with divine light and power have acknowledged themselves to be sinners unworthy of his great favors they have felt their weakness and sorrowful for their sins have tried to copy the pattern jesus christ so that concludes my topic today None enter as commandment breakers. So on tomorrow, we're going to go uh, talk about, on Thursday, just two classes. Obedience and disobedience. 
just two classes. We're either going to be obedient to the law of God or we're going to be disobedient to his laws. Okay, so that is for tomorrow. So may I share with you my devotion? Here we go. And this is, let this mind be in you. Mm, let this mind be in you. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, whom being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And this is coming from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to continue to take full control. Father God, I give you permission to allow the Holy Spirit, Father God, to use me right now. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. Daniel was but a youth when carried away captive into Babylon. He was about 15 or 16 years old, for he is called a child, which means that he was in his youth. Why did Daniel refuse to eat at the king's lustrous tables? Why did he refuse the use of wine as his beverage when it was at the king's command that it was placed before him? He knew that by the use, wine would become to him a pleasant thing and would be preferred before water. Daniel could have argued that at the royal table and at the king's command, there were no other course for him to pursue. But he and his follow and his fellows, meaning his his um, other friends and his fellows, had a council together. They caravaned the entire subject as to how they could improve their physical and mental power by the use of wine. They studied this subject most diligently. The wine of itself, they decided, was a snare. They were acquainted with the history of Nahum and Abihu, remember, there were the uh, first uh, two sons of Aaron. Okay, so they were acquainted with the history of Nahum and Abihu, which had come to them in patchments. In these men, in these men, the use of wine had encouraged their love for it. They drank wine before their sacred service in the sanctuary. Their senses were confused. They could not distinguish the difference between the sacred and the common fire. In their brain benumbed state, they did that which the Lord had charged all who served in holy office not to do. They put the common fire upon their censers when they had been expressively charged to use only the sacred fire of the Lord more kindly than never went out, that never went out. A second consideration of these youthful captives were, let me go back, the second consideration of these youthful captives was that the king always asked a blessing before his meals and addresses his idols as deity. He set apart a portion of his food and also a portion of the wine to be presented to the idol gods whom he worshipped. This act, according to their religious instructions, consecrated the hold to the heathen god to sit at the table when such idolatry was practiced Daniel and his three brethren deemed would be a dishonor to the God of heaven. These four children decided that they could not sit at the king's table to eat of the food placed there or to partake of the wine 
all of which has been dedicated to an idol god. There was no presumptions with these youth, but a firm love for truth and righteousness. They did not choose to be singular, but they must be, else they would corrupt their ways in the courts of Babylon. So that concludes my devotion. Let this mind be in you. Mm. So my sister and brother, we have Daniel as our example. We have Joseph as our example. And there's so many examples in the, in the Bible. Uh, we got the three Hebrews boys in the Bible. So there's so many examples that we can use um, for our examples for ourselves and also for the examples for our youth. Okay? Because we as individuals will have to make a decision. Our young people, our children have to make a decision whether we're going to be obedient to God or be a dis disobedient. There's only two camps. There's only two camps. There's only two choices. You're not going to be uh, remain faithful to God or you're going to be breaking his commandment. There's only two choices, my sister and brother, two choices. And those of you that might say, well, Burdell, you know what? I have not made my decision yet. I'm still doing my research. My sister and brother, you have but a moment to make that decision because if you look all around you, you can see the love and the grace and the mercy of God. He's a kind God, but he is a just God, but he will not be waiting for us for too much longer. We are on probation, okay? So say, for instance, if you said, well, you know what? I think I'll make a decision next week and see uh, if I'm going to serve the Lord. My sister and brother, what if something happened and you don't make it for till, till next week? Then what? Then your fate has been sealed. There's not going to be a second time somebody talking about um, you, you'll come back and you'll have another opportunity. No, my sister, no, my sister. Once your eyes is closed and you uh, cannot breathe anymore and you are dead, you have made your calling and election sure. Everything is sealed. It is sealed. It is sealed. There's no way for you to come back and make another, get another choice. This is the only life we have. One life, one life. So each moment as we live, we need to make a decision to serve the Lord. And he gave us every opportunity, every evidence that you need is out there. You could go in nature and see for yourself, okay? You could look at the water and you could see, right? And you could look in your home and see different things. I mean, if you think about it, your heart is beating. My goodness. There has to be someone that is greater than you. There has to be someone that's greater than myself that's doing that. Okay? So we're thinking that, oh, my alarm clock woke me up this morning. No, my sister, my brother. It was God that woke you up this morning. So whether or not you believe or you don't believe, there is a God. <laughs> there is a God. Whether you believe it or not, there is a God. So here is my closing. Oh, for a closer walk. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Return, O oh holy dove, return, sweet messenger of rest. I hate the sin that makes thee mourn and drove thee from my breast. What peaceful hours I once enjoy, how sweet their memory still. But they have left an aching void the world can never fill. The dearest idols I have known, whatever that idol be, help me to tear it down thy throne. Let me go back. Help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. Mm. I tell you, I tell you, the dearest idols I have known. So whatever the idols be, it could be your TV, it could be your husband, it could be your children, it could be whatever that you are doing more off than serving God. More off reading fictional books and all those other books instead of reading the word of God. So there's a, many things can be your idols. I don't know, it could be your job. 
okay it could be your beauty i am so beautiful that could be one right so there's different things that people making to be an idol so we got to be very mindful so the dearest idols i have known whatever that idol be help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee so my sister and brother we have given all the evidence that we need to make a decision to serve the lord so i pray that you have made your calling and election sure standing on the winning team and we know from genesis to revelation the plan of redemption okay god has given us all the evidence from genesis to revelation from the old to the new testament everything that we need to make a decision to serve him so i pray that you have done that let us bow for prayer father god i thank you thank you father god for this beautiful day father god i thank you thank you thank you thank you that you have woke me up this morning father given me another opportunity to get my life in order father god if i have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight father god i ask you father god that you will forgive me father god and make me whiter than snow when you finish with that father god i ask you father god to mold me to shape me to continue to to use me father god to finish the work that you have called me to do father god I thank you, Father God. I give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. We thank you for being the mighty God that you sit high, Father God, and you look low, and you see our individual needs, and you have provided for us, Father God, and we thank you forever. Give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing to you, maybe you got one nugget, two nuggets, three nuggets, whatever it is. Can you hit the like button? Can you hit the share button? Can you follow me over on YouTube under Burdell Warrior? Hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. Then you can also hit the bell notification. So when my videos goes up, you'll be the first to be notified. And then whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And you can also make a comment. What are you doing today? I'm uh, I'm doing some studying and studying and studying. It's nothing like studying the word. And then I've got some other trainings I'm doing. Um, I don't think I'm not, I'm not cooking today. I have leftover. I'm not cooking today. I'm not cooking. At least I don't think I'm cooking today. So, um, with that, so I don't know in the neck in your neighborhood, but it's raining here in the Valley. I tell you, it's nothing like rain to make the air fresh, to water the earth, to, 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 to take away all the dust. Okay. So I hope and pray that God continue to water my life, water your life. Okay, and whatever it is that is not of him, that he will just wash it, wash it, wash it off, wash it off. And then, and we think the showers of blessing, and then we want the showers of blessings to just flow over our life, that we can be the example that God has called us to be. So my sister, my brother, so thank you, thank you. But before you go, you know what I've always asked you, right? A big hug. There's nothing like a hug. There's nothing like a hug. I tell you, there's nothing like a hug. And it's nothing, and it's the safest place is to give yourself a hug. So here we go. One, two, and three. I love you, my sister and brother. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Thank you for so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to shower you with his blessings. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.